this finds you well. Welcome or welcome back to As It Goes. It's so good to have you here. I'm Lydia. This week we're talking with Alex Modzeletsky. Alex was a student athlete in high school who is now passionate about student athlete mental health, physical health, and nutrition. She is a liberal studies student at NYU. We caught up earlier before this conversation in the gym, and it was so clear to me how much her experience and her grasp on her experience and her willingness to go through this and honor her truth in that process was so valuable for so many of us to hear, whether we're in college or high school, whether we're embarking on a new part of our journey, or we find ourselves in the same old thing in our lives and we're looking for change. This episode pertains way more than just to student athletes. One of my greatest joys is being able to hear different people's stories and know how much we all relate to them, even if we haven't gone through that experience, even if we aren't in this case, for example, a student athlete in and of ourselves or an athlete at that. So I invite you to listen to this conversation and see what you can learn from what Alex has learned from her journey and what comes of this discussion and vulnerability. So without further ado, here we go. Alex, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. So I'm Alex Mazalewski. Um, I'm a freshman at NYU and I'm currently studying um, liberal studies, but my plan is to go into applied psychology and hopefully nutrition because I have like future aspirations to uh, coach mentally, physically, and nutritionally and um, try and help student athletes find the right way to go about their sport without um, possibly leading to burnout. That's a great intro. Alex was nervous about her intro. (laughs) Absolutely great. I don't think as a freshman in college, I could have ever introduced myself that succinctly. That was frightening. (laughs) Brilliant. Um, Obviously, we can already tell why I think Alex is interesting because of this passion that she has and interest and drive to, in a holistic way, um, coach and really nourish student athletes. Would you give us a little context in your own experience why this is what you're interested in? Yeah, so I actually grew up as a dancer. Um, I danced for seven years and then- Wait, really? I didn't know this. Yeah, I, I never even mentioned this, but like I wanted to be a professional dancer for a minute. <laughs> um, what and then, kind of dance? Um, well, I did ballet. That was like the main one because I started with ballet. And then um, I started going into like tap and modern and hip hop. And then modern and hip hop were kind of like my favorites and like mm-hmm. temporary. Um, I really like I watched Dance Moms. Um, <laughs> I went to the ALDC like in LA um, and took like a dance class there. And I was I wanted to move to LA. Like I was so into like being like this Aww. famous dancer. Um, and then I just like realized and like this is like a pattern that I'm starting to see. Like I realized mm. that it just like wasn't really going anywhere and I mm. couldn't really see myself doing it in the future, especially because there was not a lot of opportunity in like Connecticut for dancers. Well, I mean, some, well, some people are like, they go to like Maine and like go professional. Um, right. But I think just like the type of dancing I wanted, I just couldn't see it mm-hmm. happening the way that I wanted it to happen. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I took a step back and then um, that's when I also moved schools to GFA. Um, oh. Yeah. And then, so basically I quit dance and move school so it was kind of just like a new chapter for me Mm. um and then I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I realized that basketball was the sport that I played like all my life just a little bit like for school stuff um and Mm. I realized like that was the sport that 
I had like a little part of my heart for like it was fun um so I was like well I want to go to college I kind of like tend to like go all into things when (laughs) I like this pattern I relate to this pattern Um, you can put a pin in it (laughs) I see like a little bit of it that I like and I'm like okay wait like what if I just put 100% into this sport right now (laughs) but anyways yeah so I it was freshman year and I was surrounded by some like athletes and like was training with athletes who wanted to go to college for basketball and I was very clearly like behind like skill wise and experience wise because with basketball like a really important part is like knowing the game Mm -hmm. and and like that honestly comes before skill um and so I was really behind and a lot of the coaches around me and like people around me were like well like they kind of just they didn't say it exactly but they kind of made me feel like I couldn't make it Mm -hmm. and um something about me is like whenever anyone shows any doubt I'm like it makes me like angry like I want to prove them wrong Mm -hmm. um so I basically just was like okay well I'm gonna do AAU and do you know what AAU is no it's like travel it's like travel team for like basketball and it's basically what you get into so you can get like recruited um and it's like you play in the spring too so you have like winter season with school and then AAU season is in the spring um so yeah I got into AAU and I was still very behind like I wasn't really doing much outside of like regular practices um because I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing Mm -hmm. um and then it was like off and on and then when COVID hit for some reason (laughs) I just got into like long distance running and then somehow I like ended up going outside to our basketball hoop and just like shooting around and like getting better at ball handling. And then while we were also in quarantine, um, GFA, like the varsity team, like we would have zooms and do like ball handling. And then with my AAU team, we would also do ball handling. So like, we didn't know when we were coming back at that point, but like, we just wanted to like keep getting work in or whatever. Like it was optional, but I was like, Oh, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to get into this. And then I was like, well, this is like a perfect opportunity for me to like get better behind the scenes and then come back like so much better than like I was before. Um, so I basically was focusing on ball handling, like shooting. And then what I started with, which was like long distance running, like I was focusing so much on my like physical, like the physical aspect of basketball and like making sure I was in shape. So when I came back, like I would be in shape. And like, yeah. like other people who were like maybe slacking off, like <laughs> I would just like be up here. Yeah. And um, I knew for s- some reason, I knew that like being the hardest worker was like working all the time for me. Like if I wanted to get ahead or like at least catch up to my peers, like I had to put in a lot of time to like make up for the time lost. Mm-hmm. Um, so at first it was really fulfilling like I felt like I had a goal I was getting like really fit and um I was seeing progress like the only thing that I didn't have was like game experience because COVID um and that's what I needed um so then when we got back into it for AU season um my AU team actually like came back early um compared to like a lot of other AU teams like it was just like this whole thing with COVID and like all the rules and my team kind of like they didn't like go against the rules, but they found their ways around the rules so we could get to the gym. Um, so uh, basically, I like thank my AU team for like getting me into the gym, like uh, getting me game experience, especially like boys and girls, like finding any opportunity for me to play. Um, mm-hmm. So I gained that experience. Um, and then fast forward, I kept doing all that. And when we came back to school, I was in this mindset of like, okay, I'm still going to keep doing this, even though school is like in the picture now, (laughs) like I have to be able to do all of it now. Um, So you're June, are you a junior at this point or still a sophomore? So when I think about it, it kind of gets blurry because like COVID kind of, like I forget, like COVID made, I know, (laughs) 
one big blob. <laughs> um, <laughs> junior year, GFA came back um, in person. Um, we were like one of the only schools who went to like in um, in person like class. Um, I think it started in September. Um, in September, okay. Yeah, and they had all these things going on, like mass requirements, obviously, but like right. social distancing. So they had to change the whole schedule, like all that. They did everything to keep us in person, um, yeah. which honestly, I'm glad because I don't focus online. So yeah. like, basically, I didn't have a normal junior year, but I had a more normal junior year than a lot of okay. other people I know. Um, so yeah, it was nice. The schedule was honestly nice because I was able to fit in like my training like I would mm. wake up uh like do cardio or go to the gym with my dad and like shoot around and then in the middle of the day I would like do cardio too <laughs> I don't know why but <laughs> whatever I was like I'm doing this like I gotta be better than everyone whatever um and then I would go to like practice or like an AAU like shoot around something like that yeah um and then I would come home and sometimes I would do like strengthening like after that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, and then like homework, honestly, I'm lucky to say that like I found ways to get my work done during the day. Um, I would go to the library, wow. just like do all this work in the library. Like you can probably already tell that I didn't really have much of a social life outside of basketball um, at this point. Um, so yeah, I was basically putting my whole being into this sport because I wanted to prove everyone wrong and like mm -hmm. catch up to everyone mm -hmm. and I was seeing like progress yeah. I was but I think I'm also saying that because I was being told that I was getting better but honestly like inside I was still so like set on like working harder than everyone that I started to fall into like this mindset that was like you're not working hard enough Mm -hmm. And it was so clear that I was putting in more time than the average person. But if I would make a mistake in practice or like if my experience in the game wasn't kind of like it wasn't shining through, I would mm -hmm. immediately be like, you're not doing enough. Like you need to go do this. Like and it wasn't really making sense. Like It wasn't rational because I would have problems with experience and then think I wasn't like working out enough, like physically which mm. doesn't like match up um right I think I just thought if I was punishing my body like then I was somehow like be better in the end <laughs> um like both experience wise and physically yeah um but it just started to get really controlling like my mind was controlling me <laughs> um yeah. to the point where like if I wasn't working out like all the time, like if I had one moment of free time, I'm like, okay, what can I be doing right now to get better? Like, should I be watching games? Like, should I be doing something? Wow, and yeah. like, I could not relax. Like I, I couldn't relax. And at the same time, like I wasn't giving myself credit for anything that I was doing. Right. Um, so you can see how this just got like pretty dark, honestly, totally. really fast. Totally. And, like, at the same time, I had adults around me who were at this point, like cheering me on, could like see how hard I was working. Mm. Um, and I just felt like that added more pressure to like get better and keep getting better and eventually get recruited by colleges. Mm. Um, so that, that all mixed together, um, I think just created a really toxic mindset. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I told you, I go all in. So this kind of, this mindset really just consumed me completely. Um, and so I don't think I burnt. So I was honestly impressed with my body, how it like didn't give out. <laughs> um, yeah. I definitely wasn't eating enough because I didn't have time to eat. Um, and then after games, like there's like that moment where you're just not hungry. Yeah. Um, and like, that's when you're supposed to like try and eat, <laughs> especially if you have another game afterwards. Um, so like, it's not like I wasn't eating on purpose. It was just like, I didn't have time to. And then when I did, it definitely wasn't the amount of calories that I was burning or like even close to it. Right. Um, so my body was basically just on overdrive and 
I thought my body was like invincible because I wasn't getting sick. Like I wasn't getting injured for a long time. Like I thought I was healthy and yeah. I was like convincing myself I was healthy. Um, and then there was just like a point where, yeah, I was getting like, I was talking to coaches. I was advocating for myself. I was going to these camps, like in like Pennsylvania, like with people I don't know, um, just so I could get that exposure. And I was emailing coaches, um, kind of taking it all into my own hands. Mm. Um, and then there's just like a point I was visiting a school and this was, uh, summer summer after junior year so summer okay. going to senior year um there was this one coach who was just really interested in me um in a school in Maryland and I went to visit and I loved them like they were so nice it was a really small school in the middle of nowhere and I just like there was a point where I was like can I see myself here and like a lot of the other schools I was looking at like kind of the same deal yeah um, small schools you know like decent in academics but I was uh, like pretty strong in academics um and I was willing to throw that away for basketball I was like well I'll go anywhere if I can play basketball and that was kind of the mindset I was in but it wasn't until that summer where I was like is this really what I want to (laughs) do like I've kept my academics like strong throughout this whole process which I didn't even realize like how much of like how much of an accomplishment that is, especially because I was doing so much like work on my body and my in like this sport and then also maintaining my grades somehow. Right. Um, so Alex and I both went to the same high school and it is not easy to do what she did and also maintain <laughs> quality academics. Just yeah. <laughs> so you can see like how my own personal time just like there was no time for me no time for me like at all um which I thought was fine at the time like Mm -hmm. I was getting better and that's all that mattered right like that's all that mattered to me um so yeah there's just this turning point and I think it's because senior year you like kind of have to make the decision like you you either go to college for basketball or you go to college for academics like you need to like figure it out Um, and I just had like a turning point at that school. I remember sitting in the car, like looking at the school and I was like, there's this little voice in my mind. That's like, do you want to do this? And like, of course there was this other voice in my mind that was like basketball, basketball, basketball. That was so, (laughs) so much louder, but I started to like hear this little voice that was like, should you do this? And I guess that like, that's my gut. Like, yeah. I think my intuition is pretty strong and like, I trust my gut a lot. Um, And when my gut is telling me something, I really can't ignore it. Even if I try Mm. to in the beginning. Mm. Um, And at that point I was so a hundred percent basketball that bringing up the idea of quitting was just so far-fetched. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's just like, I remember asking my dad, I'm like, what if I just quit? Like, like it was a joke. It was totally a joke, but like in my mind, it honestly like wasn't a joke. Not a joke. (laughs) He was like, uh, yeah, like sure. Whatever. (laughs) And like, Mm. um, yeah. So then I kept playing after that. I kept playing into fall. Um, I started to like plateau a little bit. Um, couldn't see myself like progressing. Um, Mm felt like college coaches I was getting impatient with like college coaches and like Mm -hmm. wanted to hear from more college coaches and felt like I wasn't getting enough uh like film for these coaches and things just like weren't like they just weren't working working. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. obviously you need to give like coaches time to reach out and stuff and my parents were like you have to wait like you have to wait till spring like you don't have to commit to a school so early and I was surrounded by athletes who were already committed to schools and like already about to commit to schools that I felt like I needed to commit like immediately like I needed to be I needed to have that moment of like fulfillment Mm -hmm. like I I need to tell everyone where I'm going Um, there's also I don't know mm -hmm. if this is every school but also our school did a thing where like for the committed athletes, they had their picture. It was a thing. They announced it. Like 
it's a real thing. And I think that even what you're saying, like that other like pressure to like perform in that sense mm-hmm. in, in the, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what everyone around me is doing. Where's my moment to, to fulfill this sort of goal that I've set for myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, especially at like in high school, like I had my AU team and, it, and then I had my high school team and there was a really big divide there because my high school team, I didn't feel appreciated for all the work I was doing. Um, and my AU team, I was like, not praised, but they, they did like appreciate how much work I was doing and they mm. gave me time. Like they basically saw how much I was putting in and they gave like that back to me by giving me play time, like mm. all that. And um, my high school team and my high school in general, like they didn't really appreciate that aspect of me. Um, and that's why I so badly wanted to commit to a school mm-hmm. and just like show everyone. Yeah. Like I, I did it, you know? Um, and <laughs> literally, and I saw like a common thing to talk about, especially like among athletes in high school is like, when is this person going to commit? Like what colleges are they talking to? Whatever. <laughs> and there's just this pressure to commit so early yeah I was getting caught up in it and I was like also questioning if I wanted it and so I was like getting really Mm. impatient and like anxious and my parents you think that part of you in terms of like you're already hearing that I like how you described it too like I think that true voice of self can sometimes be quieter like than the noise of our minds already hearing that do you feel like you were also were you trying to steamroll over that voice by like commit, do the thing, do, even though this is like in the background, Mm -hmm. just keep going and do the thing. Pretty much. Yeah. I was just trying to push through. I'm like, maybe this is just a moment. Like maybe maybe, like, you're always going to have moments like that. Like they tell you like athletes, like you're not, you're not a true athlete unless you've thought about quitting at least once. Like that's what they say. And like a lot of professional athletes will also say that. Um, so like, that's kind of just the excuse I made. Um, mm-hmm. and I was like, once you commit to a college, you'll be fine. Like you'll, you'll remember why you're doing it. Like it's fine. Um, and so I think that's also why I wanted to commit. Cause I was just like, I need to fix this problem right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, I was like, I don't even care about like, academics anymore like I just I just want to play basketball in college and there was like more so in the beginning I was like I'm not going to college unless it's for basketball um Mm. and then I was starting like I said like there was this turning point where I was starting to realize like this is my future like (laughs) this is my future we're talking about and like do I really want to give up academics like I know people say I'm academically strong but like do I really want basketball or do I really want like academics like which one is it because the schools I was looking at like if I wanted to go to a like really academically strong school and also play basketball like there are only a few options for that especially because Mm -hmm. I wanted to go d3 like I didn't want to go d1 um I knew that or like d3 or d2 Mm -hmm. definitely not d1 because I felt like I was already training like a d1 athlete Um, and I can't can't even imagine like how much worse that probably would have got if I went d1 um and I think there's also that voice a little bit throughout the process that was like well you still want to have time for other things maybe like you're grinding now but when you get to college like maybe you you want a little bit of time for other things yeah Um, but obviously you can't like I don't think I could have made time for other things especially because the mindset that I was in Mm. like I planned on it but would I actually follow through with that or Mm. would I just like bring these like toxic habits straight into college with me yeah Um, so yeah there was definitely that turning point and I was trying to like ignore it push it away um and then I think my parents saw it before me um Mm -hmm. that this just wasn't this wasn't like going well there was just a point where I was so like in my head that I was like breaking down after every game, like Mm. just on myself, like that I just wasn't going to be good enough. Like I'm just not good enough. Um, And 
there was one specific practice. Like I remember this practice. Um, I just felt like things weren't working. Like yeah, the coach that I had at the time. Um, so we had like my AAU program and right. then like the head coach, um, which I had a good relationship with. And then like the other coaches for each team. Mm. Um, and so I was playing with um, a boys team for my AAU program in the fall. Um, and I just felt like I wasn't being prioritized and I was the oldest, like, so, and like, this was the moment, the fall of senior year, like you got to like get things going, you know, you got to get your film, you got to send it to coaches, like whatever. But I just wasn't getting that. And then I was getting in my head about being good. And then that would show up in my game and like I would mm. test in and like not show my true talents and that was honestly a problem I had the whole process like I got so good like skill wise and then in a game if I wasn't in the right headspace yeah. I would, like completely throw that out the window <laughs> like I just totally. did not present that in games all the time and of course I had good games um but it really just depended on those outside influences like for some reason I could not let go of like this people pleasing thing and like Mm. proving to everyone else like it wasn't about me anymore it was about like proving it to everyone else Mm -hmm. um and I just got so caught up in it that it would show up in my game and my head coach like saw that he knew me like very well um and he would like get mad at me like as he should because I work so hard and like then when I'm in a game it's like what are you doing (laughs) like what are you doing um but anyways yeah so there was this one practice um and I was plateauing obviously and like I just things weren't going they weren't going good (laughs) and then I was driving home and I was like I don't want to do this anymore like I do not I can't keep fighting myself like this because it was really just like I say in like my speech, like it was a fight, like between my body and my mind, like I would come home nauseous because I was so tired and like malnourished. Like I just was not eating. (laughs) um, And I just like got used to that, Mm -hmm. but because my mind was so loud that I just Mm -hmm. did not really care about how my body was feeling. Yeah. Um, And I was like, I can't, I don't want to do this fight anymore. (laughs) Like I just want to relax. Like I I'm tired like I was exhausted and I was driving home and I came home and like basically had a mental breakdown to my parents I was like I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to go back to practice tomorrow like I cannot see myself going to practice anymore like I don't want to do this Mm -hmm. and of course you have those moments like I've had them like many times where I was like I'm quitting and in the back of my mind I'm like you know you're not quitting like you know, you still love it. Like, you know, you still want to keep doing this, but there was that moment where it was just so different from the rest where I was just like, I don't want to do this. And I literally can't see myself doing it anymore. Like I don't want to. Mm, That's Um, huge. Yeah, it was because it's just like, you know, you want to go back sometimes. And then other times like, you're like, this is a moment and I'm going to be fine after this. But like with this, it was like, this is a moment, but like, I don't think I'm going to be fine if I like ignore this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, So I basically took some days off after that. I didn't like quit immediately. Right. I texted my coach saying like, I need, it's not you. It's me. I need space. (laughs) No. Yeah. Like my head coach, honestly, he's, he's a drill sergeant and like, he's very like, um, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but he's very like no emotions, like mm-hmm. kind of like don't be so emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, so like there was like this aspect of me that was trying to please him all the time mm-hmm. and telling him I wanted time off, mm-hmm. especially because of the like um, like persona that I built up for myself was like I work all the time, like I'll be there, like I'll be in the gym anytime it's open. Telling him I needed time off is just like so scary um Mm -hmm. and so like I told my parents I was like crying to them I'm like I can't I can't like I can't ask for time off like I can't do that um 
And they're like, yes, you can. <laughs> and I mean, like, I don't know why I was so scared to just ask for time off. Like, it's almost like it wasn't my life anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, make decisions for myself. Um, and then I did, like, I, I ended up being like, I need time off. Like, I don't know when I'll be back. Like, that's basically what I said. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he responded the way he, you know, you would think he would respond. Mm-hmm. It's like, you tend to like get caught up in your emotions, whatever. But at the end of it, he's like, take time off. Okay. Like whatever. Um, and I didn't, I didn't text for a couple of days. Like I didn't say when I was going to be back. Um, yeah. And then I, there was just like, I was at school, like this was really on my mind. Like and I felt like the more time I went without quitting, the more like stress I was causing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, so I don't know really how long I took off. It was definitely less than a week because I was, it was on my mind. But um, it probably felt like forever. Yeah, it did. And I was like trying to tell my friends about it, but they're also athletes. So like they tell, get telling, yeah, telling them how I want to quit is kind of just like, I'd rather keep it to myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did end up quitting. And basically by quitting, I mean quitting my AAU team, which was the main focus because that's what was getting me into college. Um, mm-hmm. And this was like mid fall season. Um, so yeah, like I sent a text to my coaches. It's like, I, I talked about how like, if anything, like if anyone would know this, like it would be you, like when something isn't fun anymore, like I shouldn't be doing it. Like if I don't see a reason to be doing it, like, yeah. am I doing it? Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, it should be something you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I just like, don't see this happening for me anymore. And I want to focus on my last year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and that wasn't me saying like, I'm never going to play again. I was just like, that not right now. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. right now, like I could always pick it up again later. Um, right. and, like, a lot of athletes forget that. Like mm. just cause like just because you're doing it now and just because you think like it's going to get you into college doesn't mean you can like you can't just push it off to the side for a little bit and come back to it like you have your whole life to come back to it um and when you're in college like there's always the option of like walking on and I guess for like d1 athletes it's a little harder yeah Um, but like if anything like if anything this taught me that you can do anything you put your mind to like Mm. you want it like you can go out and get it. Um, and so, yeah, obviously for some people, like it is easier to just go straight into it when you go into college, go straight into the sport. Um, but like, I think we just get caught up in the idea that like you can take a step back. Like you're yeah. so young, like you can take a step back and like figure out what you really want. And like, maybe you'll go back to it. Maybe you won't. And that's like, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like quitting that was just like a big step for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really, I mean, okay. There's a few things. One, I think, and you know, you have the experience from the inside perspective of this. I think it's really interesting. The language that we use that it's quitting. Like, and we talked about this at the gym a few weeks ago, but just like, that notion of like being a quitter and all of that, that, that connotes, I think, who is it serving? Because at the end of the day, I mean, right. So let's take this, your dance too, because you even described that as quitting. And I think it's such a interesting, and I've had my own experience with this. It's an interesting thing that obviously we pick up from the outside, but then the narrative that we tell ourselves, because it's like you said, you, there came a point when you finally couldn't see yourself doing any, doing it anymore. Why? And this is more, I think more of like a rhetorical question, but please answer it. If, if you've sorted this out on your own, it's like, why do we call that quitting? Why is it quitting in a bad sense? to say, I know myself and I know this isn't serving me anymore. So I'm going to walk away from this. And I'm going to like, to me, I feel like quitting is like head down, shameful, 
all of these different sort of emotions and connotations, even like the mindset that you were describing with pushing yourself, it's like, oh, she just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And the weakness of that versus the incredible strength that it takes to walk away from something that you loved and that was fulfilling you and that did grant you all of these skills regardless of how toxic it might have become to pursue them to achieve what you set out to do and i think that it's you know from from your perspective and like being surrounded by athletes and by that mentality i think it's a it's a really interesting um culture yeah yeah, it's definitely a culture. <laughs> um, like I, it's hard to see this, um, like for people who don't play sports, but when you like get really serious about something like in the sports world, um, it's all about like this lion mentality. And I'm not sure if you've like ever heard of this. It kind of comes from like Kobe Bryant, like all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got really like wrapped into it, like, cause I loved, I loved the idea of working hard at something like mm-hmm. kind of making sacrifices. It was all about making sacrifices. And even now, like, I believe getting to where you want to be involves sacrifices. Totally. Um, it's just about judging when those sacrifices are necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something I couldn't, I didn't really know how to judge at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought sacrificing literally everything in my life uh, for basketball was the way to get there. And I guess in a way, like it was one of the ways because I did end up progressing. I was getting recruited, like it was one of the ways, but it just didn't end up working out in the end because of the path that I chose. Yeah. Um, Like I got better and like a short amount of time. But when you think about it, like I went from like here to here in Mm -hmm. two years Mm -hmm. and in the end, you get like an exhausted person (laughs) just like catching up like that in a short amount of time, like yes, going to lead to burnout. Mm -hmm. Um, So like there is this culture and I tried to talk about this in my speech, but I couldn't really conceptualize it very well. Um, I think it's also your coaches but yeah in basketball because I don't know if I can like speak for other sports Mm -hmm. um, in basketball it's all about just like no pain no gain like all about like just pushing through all the time Mm -hmm. Um, that like I think we can lose certain aspects of life that are like still very much important to like take care of yeah Um, and like this is stuff that I was surrounded by all the time, mm. especially on social media. Like I followed accounts that were like, you have mm-hmm. to make sacrifices, like all that stuff, like very aggressive, like. Right. And reaffirming then the mentality and the mindset and the thoughts that you're having that are also contributing to the breakdown of your body, the breakdown of your well-being. Yeah. And I would listen to these motivational speeches, like before games that or the same thing, like feeding into that. Yeah. And it felt good at the time because I knew I was working hard. Like I'm like, I had trouble giving myself credit, but there was also still a part of me that was like, you know, you're doing all, mm-hmm. of you know, you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, it was nice to have that like validation from like yeah. social media and like those motivational speeches. And then also like my coach who also was like that too. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that culture, if you let it consume you, it can become very toxic. And I don't think it's anyone's fault for getting consumed by it because Mm. I think social media just, they, they emphasize these points of like going hard, but they Mm -hmm. don't have enough emphasis on like self-care. And I think that's because they don't like believe in self-care they don't they haven't like lived a life where they felt like they needed to prioritize that which is like valid everyone has different lives like um and everyone gets like to their goals differently right Um, but I think and like why I want 
to do what I want to do in the future is because I feel like there's so many coaches like and adults in student athletes lives and like this is not me dissing them at all but I feel like they just promote like the wrong ideas sometimes yes forget that we're still children like we are children and we're developing and making a sport our whole life and discarding every other aspect of our life Mm -hmm. is just gonna set us up for failure like Mm -hmm. we need those other parts of our lives to like be prepared in the future and when I quit like even when I quit even though it was a short amount of time that I was doing it and I can't imagine like for people who have been doing it their whole lives yeah 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 and then quitting um yeah I just had no like sense of like where I was like I Mm. wasn't social really like I had a couple like main friends um but I just like I didn't know what I liked I didn't know what I wanted to do um and I didn't know what to do with my days (laughs) like I had so much free time suddenly and I was like it was just like so it was unsettling honestly like did you get a little depressed after you quit in terms of like having that free time I think because like when we're idle and we don't know what to do not that like we have to be constantly doing but like you said I feel like not knowing who you are what your interests are like that's unearthing yeah like at first when I, the like first couple of days maybe it was a week maybe there was a good week after I quit where I was like relieved I mm. was like so used to my brain was so used to being like okay you have practice at this time like remembering all this stuff like planning out my days yeah and then suddenly I didn't have to do that anymore and it's almost like my brain was looking for it it's like what do you like what do you need to be stressed about now and there was just mm-hmm. nothing like there's nothing to be stressed about and that was relieving um but it was like shortly after that I started to realize well I don't know what I'm doing and like I was super well there was like okay it was, I don't even know how to describe it. I think I'm still like trying to figure out what happened right um but it just got really I think I just had an identity crisis and um, sure. this was just so it was a big hit like it was a big hit on my life and like my body too my body had to react to not working out all the time and like mm-hmm. it was changing and then that was also scary because my body was changing and yeah. um so it just like was triggering all these things in my body and there were definitely moments I remember I had like a good two weeks where I was just like really depressed like Mm. I had depression I struggled with depression in middle school Um, ever since then I don't think I've like ever been back to that place Mm -hmm. until after I quit Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and just a moment where I was like this is what depression is like (laughs) I remember now like Mm. a physical feeling like I was sitting in class once and I just could not be there. Like I left, like I couldn't be there. And it's, it's hard to understand for people who don't know what depression is like, but I was just not in this world. Like I felt like I was in a different world. Um, I had to like talk to the guidance counselor, which is like something that's hard for me because I like to deal with things on my own, especially Mm -hmm. with that basketball aspect. It's like, deal with your stuff alone like you don't need help kind of (laughs) like yeah yeah. no emotions like don't even like acknowledge emotions right Um, so I think and even now like I still like deal with things on my own but I think in a healthier way um but I still acknowledge that like getting help and talking to people is very helpful when you need it um and so I reached out to my guidance counselor at GFA who I love (laughs) um and she helped me out she helped me talk through things but the thing is, like, I didn't know what was happening. Like, I didn't know why I was feeling this way. Mm. And it was just like all these different parts of my life just felt like they were crumbling. And I like knew that I wanted to go to NYU. Like that's also part of the reason I quit. I was like, I want to go to NYU. Like I was trying to get like I was trying to play here um, mm. or school, um, but I never heard from the coaches which was like kind of unfortunate. Um, but like, I still, you know, maybe that's like something for later my college career, but, um, yeah. So like I applied to NYU, 
um that's kind of really the only school I had in mind. like I did yeah. apply to others but um yeah I applied like ED mm-hmm. um so then when I did get in it was kind of like okay well I got that out of the way like I got like to not like sound like stuck up but like I was like okay I got my college decision out of the way so like now I can deal with like what I'm going through right now mm. um and yeah like all of senior year it was pretty like hard <laughs> like not the greatest year of my life um, yeah, yeah yeah stressful um like lost some friends in the process people that I was really close with um spaced away and I think that's because I was like changing I was going through a lot of changes because they were so used to this one version of me right um that honestly wasn't even really a great friend because I was so consumed in what I was doing Mm -hmm. um that when I did quit I was focused on like like making my relationships better yeah Um, that like I think it was just too big of a change that like people didn't know how to deal with it so like a lot of people don't when we change and they are used to one version of us. And I know at so many different stages of our lives has happened. I hear from so many, like even older people, a lot of people, like I'm thinking of this one mom in our reself community who talks about like her interest in being like living a conscious life and like having none of her friends be interested in this and like what that's like to show up and to show up differently and in changed ways. It's yeah. It's not people. I'm sure you've heard this people like people know a version of us. They like to have a version of us. And if they themselves are not like fluid and embracing change and like willing, Mm -hmm. then it's yeah, it's hard, but then it's, you know, those per those people are not you know they're not your tribe Mm -hmm. yeah I mean it was sad because I was already like pretty lost and then when I didn't have my support system anymore yeah it wasn't like an aggressive like we're not friends anymore it was just kind of like we're spacing and like that was at the time I was like what is going on like why are you not like talking to me like you used to um Mm -hmm. I think it's easier for us to like be like oh it's something about me like I'm like too much of this too much of that right um but I was also trying to be like okay don't like blame yourself right now like you're through it (laughs) um so like yeah losing my support system definitely was like also a blow and like I think that's what triggered like that de- like depressive episode that I had mm. um because I had no one like I felt like I had yeah. no one and I was in like just this like abyss like I just didn't know what was going on um and I won't lie like I was like maybe I should just go back to basketball like I need I need that like sense of like comfort right now and like mm. passion and like reaching a goal like that it's nice to have something that you're like striving yeah um and like that's what I needed and I knew I wasn't gonna go back but like there was like I wanted to because it's just like it's scary when you don't know what you're doing um and like now I'm like well it's important that you move on from certain phases of your life and like part of that is going to be like a transition period where you don't Mm -hmm. have to move on um and that's like important like you yes to move on and I think what I'm learning now is like life is about like phases and like when something doesn't serve you anymore like the longer you hold on to it like the more you're just like delaying your growth like towards something else and like that's scary like obviously it's hard to move on but like even in some of my relationships now like I can see that happening to people where they're trying to hold on to something that just is not serving them anymore and they're Mm -hmm. unhappy Mm -hmm. um and like I'm not gonna I'm not like judging them at all like I went through the same thing but like it is just helping me like realize even more like how important that turning point was for me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely it's so interesting like this applies to so many other experiences in our lives, like be it a relationship, 
that's not serving, be it um, a path, right? I think, you know, even hearing you, so hearing you describe like your mentality around basketball and everything and the, like the comfortability of it. And um, it reminds me a lot of like the mindset that I was in when I had an eating disorder and like that phase of coming to terms with like, I can't see my, like, I cannot keep living like this. I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life. And I think like you spoke about that body embodied aspect of like, my body is changing and, you know, that transition too, it really, like, it really reminds me of that because it is when we have things in our lives that grant us a sense of control and like, I know what's going on in my life. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. I know what I'm doing the next day. I know, you know, I have that control because in every, like, we can't control anything in life except ourselves and the ways in which we control ourselves can be negative or positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a spectrum, but let's just put it that way. And so it's really interesting that like, first of all, I think, you know, being, I being specifically being a young woman, like transitioning, going through puberty, like, first of all, no one just tells you that like, you not just like your body's changing but like you're going from being a child to becoming a woman and like that's a transition in and of itself and like yes expect your body to change and yes be patient with it and so for me when I was doing my eating disorder recovery and I had to surrender like all of my trust and fears to the support system that I now had and like my nutritionist and my therapist and them being like, look, things are going to be like absolutely the epitome of what you don't want and uncomfortable. And you, if you just stick it through, if you don't go back to those thoughts, to that thing, to what was comfortable, you will come out the other side, a completely different version of yourself, a healthy version of yourself, and like have the mental capacity to do what it is that like you're here to do what you want to do like so much more beyond like what you're also saying of like that past self that's keeping you from growing in like <laughs> literally and metaphysically growing into who you actually can be if you allow yourself to let go of that past self I think it's really interesting in that was definitely like what what your your you know experience reminded me of yeah I mean like I had like that makes me think of a quote from my speech actually Please. where I said um uh learning how to find balance in my deeply flawed relationship with fitness rebuild my social life and find actual interests outside of basketball is like being born again but with the thoughts, habits, and traumas from your past life. It's like walking through a forest knowing stability and security are on the other side, but everything in your mind is telling you to just go back because that's what you know. I just like, I, when I was writing that, it didn't sound good at first, but then after like editing it, I think it like, I really liked that metaphor that I chose because yeah. it's exactly what it felt like and like, what you're saying like yeah it, it's it's important like you want to turn back like you do yeah. but like not turning back is like really important for your growth mm -hmm. and being like uncomfortable is just so important to like learn more about yourself mm -hmm. and when you have problems in like relationships or friendships it's just like a time for you to learn more about the way you're acting the way you are like towards certain situations mm -hmm. and then, like in the future you will have like mastered that area but like it's uh, there's new areas all the time like you need to keep figuring yourself out because we don't 
know who we are yet. <laughs> like, I mean, at least I don't, like, I don't know myself completely. Yeah. Some people will be like, this person knows me better than I know myself. And I think there are some people in my life like that. Um, mm-hmm. and they don't know everything. Like, right. I don't know everything. there's still aspects that I haven't like even like unlocked like there's still mm-hmm. parts of my life I haven't touched yet and no one else has touched so it's just like you have to just be uncomfortable in order to become comfortable with like those parts of yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely um the speech that Alex and I keep referencing will be linked this is a Friday we did this thing at our high school where um as a senior you could give a like Friday speech at announcements at our assembly. Um, I did one where I talked about this when I did our episode on um, life without social media. And I talked about stopping using social media when I was a senior in high school. Um, So Alex obviously spoke about her experience with this and um, 10 out of 10 recommend. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that speech was actually, I say in the speech, but like it was originally um, in the beginning or not in the beginning, junior year, I was thinking about like, I need to give one before I graduate. Um, And I thought it was going to be about me talking about how I'm going to college, you know, how I proved everyone wrong, whatever. Um, And then when I quit, there was still this part of me that's like, well, you still need to give this speech. Like, (laughs) you still need to like leave your mark on this school like yeah um so I think that's kind of just when I quit it was just immediately like I need to bring awareness to this subject and like Mm -hmm. this is where I can start and it was fulfilling like it really was it was scary and like emotional um Mm. but I'm glad I did it because I know a lot of people um in the audience needed to hear it um and yeah like it was it was good and it was a good start but like I want to keep bringing awareness to like this topic yeah I think it's so beautiful and I think that so much of our own painful experience big t traumas little t traumas those lessons that we learn from that are a gift in and of itself because exactly what you did through this entire experience and what you want to continue to do is to use that so people don't have to have that experience. So people have a support system where if they're going through something, they have an adult in the room that can say, yeah, I've been there. And also here's how we can do it differently. And I think that especially when it comes to sports. And as you touched on, like, and I think this is just a cultural generational thing that's transitioning. Like I'm, I mean, we're not many years apart, but I'm blown away by like your level of self-awareness and just consciousness about like psychology and well-being and, and your experience. And maybe that has a little bit to do with your experience with depression in middle school and what that taught you at a young age, which again, I mean, it's not like we wish these things upon people, but I think that for me in the difficult like experiences and adversities I've had throughout my life, there's not one that I would ever take back because Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from them and it gives me so much fulfillment to be able to share those with people. Like I was just talking to um, a doula yesterday for a podcast episode that's going to come before this. And she and I were talking about, um, we're talking about miscarriages and she was talking about how one in four pregnancies will be a miscarriage. And then we were also talking about how like no one tells you um, when you have a child, especially as a woman or someone who is giving birth, that you, your life is changed. Like a person, a version of you dies mm-hmm. and, and there's a completely different version after this experience. And like that whole, you know, autonomous individual no longer exists because you're literally caring for a human for the rest of your life. So 
it was, we were talking about this and we were talking about the fact that like, it's happening. I think, you know, for me, in my experience in middle school and high school, none of this stuff was talked about. And that was really isolating for me. But these are like the real conversations. This is real life. This is like the real juiciness of it. Because I think when we have these conversations, when we talk about these things, when we grow as like individuals in conversation and also culturally from a coach that is just going to push you to be the best performing athlete that you can be to one that says, here's how you take care of your mind, body, soul. And that is actually going to be most productive for you and your game and your performance is so, so, so important. And it's so awesome that that transition is happening. And I think part of it, like, it doesn't come without the adversity and the growing pains of like, I had to experience this and now I'm going to do this so that you don't have to experience this. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like there's definitely, there's this connotation like with mental health and like self-care that's like kind of like people are like oh we'll stop being a snowflake and I hate that term (laughs) it's like well if you don't care about your mental health like you will not like go far without burning out like coaches obviously they want they want you to succeed and for some coaches like they want you to succeed so they can feel like they've done something like they succeed um which is like it's valid um and like they're not perfect um and sometimes I think they project uh their own experiences on their athletes and um that's like normal I think but it's just it kind of makes me mad a little bit that there are so many coaches and adults and like speakers who talk about things they don't know about (laughs) and like Mm -hmm. just because you love the sport just because you love basketball and you played basketball does not mean you're a good coach um Mm -hmm. and if you're going to coach you should acknowledge the parts that you cannot coach (laughs) um especially Mm -hmm. when that comes to like nutrition and mental health um the reason why I want to go into like applied psychology and nutrition is because when I do eventually become a coach hopefully um I want to talk about things I know about I want to be educated before I speak about things Mm. Um, I don't want to lead them down a road that will lead to burnout and I think there's so many coaches who yeah just because you had an experience does not mean that it's going to apply to everyone else right um at the end of the day yeah I take responsibility for like everything I went through um but I do think if I had myself like in my life, I yeah. think I would have been able to deal with it better. And maybe not, maybe I would have been stubborn, but I think I was surrounded by like these figures that had so much influence because like I'm a adult pleaser. Like I've figured that out. Um, and I will mm-hmm. like take what my coach says and I will like work on it. Like I will just raise whatever they say um yeah which is my own thing but um, but it's also like what I mean well also especially I think it goes back to what you're saying adults and this is the thing I think on a broader sense culturally be it a parent be it a teacher whoever adults in children's lives have responsibilities that we're starting to discuss like this that are beyond what we previously conceptualized them as because they do have an impact on us as children and developing humans and they play um, an authoritative role and as just role model, like subconsciously as children, we're modeling ourselves after our parents and the adults in our lives. Then Mm -hmm. when you get into the teenage years, I feel like it's more so that 
pleasing aspect because we also already developed that as children. So then it's like, I think to be a conscious adult is to really understand like, how do I show up here? What am I saying here? What am I modeling here? Mm -hmm. And how is this impacting this child? And yeah, that takes a lot of effort to be conscious. But I think I have this conversation all the time with so many people the level of responsibility that we assume as a human people, a human people, a human person coincides with the level of like meaning and reward that is paid off in the assumption of that responsibility. And that's not just my idea, but it's, you know, there's so, so much value to, to being conscious in the way that you're pursuing and have experienced the antithesis Mm -hmm. of. I think we just like need to start being more aware of like the things we're saying. And that's not like me saying we need to be more like sensitive or whatever, Mm -hmm. or because some people like be like, oh, like this generation is just so sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um, No, like I think this generation is just realizing that, well, obviously it's different because social media is like a big thing now and it wasn't when our parents were kids. Right. But like, we just are more aware of what, like how our, like how these authoritative figures are like shaping our lives. Yeah. And especially I'm taking a psychology course right now and I'm learning about it. And like, yeah, it matters like what your parents are telling you. Like, Mm -hmm. I think- Shocker. (laughs) I'm trying, (laughs) like- I'm trying like even now I try so hard not to speak about things I don't know about um Mm. because I don't want to like tell people things that aren't true and Mm. that's probably because my experience basketball I think I was told a lot of things that weren't rational and like weren't healthy um and so that's why I'm just like trying so hard to be like okay let me do more research on this before I talk about it because I don't want to give off the wrong information and I also don't want to look stupid like I want to know what I'm talking about um and I try to tell people this and like I said earlier like I'm going into what I'm going into in college so I can speak about things and know that I've learned about it and done my research and hopefully that will like help athletes because I want to like work with sports teams hopefully that will help them like avoid going through the same thing that I went through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that it, you know, it really all goes back to twofold, like one, what you were talking about with like the seedling that your path, like your love of this game started as. And I think when coaches at a highly competitive level can keep that in perspective and be compassionate with that, I think is so incredibly valuable. Like I remember, so I trained super competitively for tennis and I always had coaches that wanted me to get recruited for college and like actually dedicate myself to that. And I had the level of awareness that I was like, I if I put, like, if I turn that corner, that tipping point of like, this is fun and I'm good at this to, I'm really going to take this seriously. Not that I didn't take it seriously, but because I didn't make that tipping point, it always remained fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I had that good mindset, but it's like, if coaches, but so many of my coaches were frustrated with that. And so if coaches can understand there are like different levels that people or different things that people want to get out of it. And I think it's really interesting what you, what you kind of touched on with like the projection of coaches and like, what is, what is a coach's purpose is a really interesting question to ask. Is it just to churn out great athletes? Is it, to churn out a well-rounded person that has skills like you clearly developed in terms of like, I can pursue a goal. I know how to do that. I know, you know, how to 
have like use my drive towards something. It's a really interesting, um, it's a really interesting role in someone's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's sad, like that sports have become something it's just like, it's a sensitive topic right now, especially um, in our generation. There's like a lot of, and I talk about this in my speech, like suicide rates, like for student athletes have like skyrocketed compared to like before. Um, And I think that's Mm -hmm. because there's so much pressure on these athletes that it stops being fun. The sport is not fun anymore. And people forget that it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. And I think it just like immediately when something stops being fun, you need to rethink like what you're doing. And like, it's hard for people to realize that that's what they're doing. Cause they're like kind of an autopilot. They're kind of just like, okay, I'm doing my sport that they like forget to think about, well, am I happy? Like, do I still like doing this? And I want to like go back to basketball maybe in the future. Like I mm-hmm. still do enjoy the sport, you know, like it's still a little triggering sometimes to see a basketball sometimes. <laughs> like, I mean, some days I'm like, like oh I want to go shoot around some days I look at like the basketball court and I'm like I need to leave now like (laughs) I need to go um and I think I'm just like still trying to process it yeah like hopefully one day I can go back to it and not bring in all these like toxic like thoughts Mm -hmm. that like would just consume me and that's when I'll know it's time to go back to it um Mm -hmm. but I think right now I'm just scared that I'm gonna fall back into that mentality because I just like tend to do that (laughs) and so like I just need enough time away where I can like approach it in a different way that makes it fun again Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important and I relate to that so much even just in terms of like building a company and being in a space in which you know I have a high learning curve in that sense and like One of the things I've so taken away that echoes exactly what you said is like, whenever I'm frustrated, that's when I need to stop. And I'm glad that like, as I'm doing this and I'm lucky enough to be able to do it at the pace that is comfortable for me before I like really put the pedal to the metal, it's establishing patterns that like, if there's such a history of burnout in terms of founders and entrepreneurs, um, what are those paths? Where do they come from? What are the patterns? What, like, if I'm not caring for myself first, like as a self, as you said, and if I'm not exercising, like my other interests outside of this, what I'm doing suffers. And then what, like, if I'm frustrated, it's kind of like you were saying and describing with like, this isn't working and listening to that and being able to say like, okay, I need time off. I need to step away from this. I need to like get my head right before I come back to this and like, remember why I'm doing this. Remember that this is fun, that I literally love what I talk about and what I share and why I'm doing this. And it's so, it's so different. And I think that in so many different ways, this is where we are today in terms of starting to shift the ways in which we show up for the different elements of our, of our lives and of our pursuits. And like, to me, it's a no brainer. Like when we take care of ourselves, when we take care of our mental health, our interests, our wholeness, it just benefits everything that we do versus the like narrowed focused approach that's just the singular pursuit of a goal. It's just literally not sustainable. And we see it modeled like literally in sustainability and our climate crisis. It's like the pursuit of one thing is literally we can look around and see the detrimental effects of that. Mm -hmm. It's happening inside of each one of us, depending on the ways in which we do and don't um, take care of ourselves, show up for ourselves, pursue different things, have literal sustainable methods of being human. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, it's just like, there's this stigma around self-care and like that 
if you like prioritize self-care like you're weak somehow I I'm not like it doesn't really make much sense to me but I just know it's like I know it's there because when I do talk about how I quit because of mental mental problems like that I was having there's almost like a shame I feel a little bit when I'm talking to specific people that I don't know if they care about that stuff or not and I'm Mm. like I'm like I quit like it every time someone asks me about basketball I have to think about how I want to um like respond um sometimes Mm. it's like you know just taking a step back right now and like don't say anything else unless they ask yeah like if I want to say like I was working myself too hard I burned out like I think it's just like if someone understands what burning out is like yeah then we can talk about it but if I'm talking to someone who doesn't hasn't really ever reached that point Mm -hmm. it's really hard to like try and tell them that this yeah. is something that happens like this yeah. is some if you don't prioritize yourself this is what happens especially if you're like a workaholic or like a right. perfectionist it's right like, it's just hard to talk to people sometimes about it so I'm just like yeah I quit or I just don't even mention it <laughs> I just like don't even say anything I'm like yeah <laughs> that's it like that's it <laughs> that's so interesting do you feel like it most of those people are athletes or just like in general that happens because I feel like one of the things that I took away from, and I guess it was always a part of my experience because I always really didn't jive with like where we grew up, what people pursued, where we grew up, what people valued, where we grew up. And, um, so I was very outspoken already and kind of like, screw you. I mean, <laughs> hate me. You can hate me. I really don't care, but I do care because I have feelings. Um, I think that like, and I don't know, I mean, you're, I don't know at what point you were in GFA, what you might or might not know about this because it was a small school. When I was in a really abusive relationship and I went through that and that was like the turning point in which I had this experience that I'd already had in my life of feeling isolated and like people didn't understand me, but I really knew like people don't understand this. And the irony is that I wanted to give a Friday speech about this and the school wouldn't let me talk about it. Um, I, that was, I feel like that was the point where I was like, I will talk about this like 100% openly. I will be explicit about it and I will, share this and whatever a person brings to that conversation is up to them. Like I will share my truth fully openly because it has value. I mean, it has value for you to just continually speak your truth and not filter what you say. And obviously it's the level in which you feel safe to do that, but it's also For me, it was really like, people can also learn, even if it was that moment of like, I had to shift from a mindset of no one understands what I went through and people have preconceived notions of what I went through to I am sharing what I went through and through that. I began to see the ways in which people could imagine what it is. I don't know if you ever had, did you have Mr. Jones as a teacher? I didn't have him as a teacher, but I like know like people in my grade had him as a teacher. Okay. (laughs) He's taught us this one thing that's always stuck with me. I've shared on the podcast before, but he was like, instead of saying, I can't imagine to something, try saying, I can only imagine and see how that shifts. Because to say, I can't imagine, literally prevents me from putting myself in your shoes and imagining everything that you just said to me Mm -hmm. versus, yeah, like taking the effort to try to understand, to try to imagine. And it changes that experience. And I realized that it actually is the, (laughs) the ball is in your court in terms of 
like what you, what you decide to share and how that can, um, impact someone and, and what growth that can invite in, in someone in that moment. And that was a really, I mean, for me, that was a really big turning point from like a closed off mindset I had about my experience in that sense versus like, all right, I got to figure out this is a part of my journey. I can either put it in the closet, but I don't want to put it in the closet. I had people around me trying to put it in the closet. So here's how I'm going to try to approach this now. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I can understand, like, I thought they weren't going to let me give the speech, honestly. Um, Mm -hmm. I have had experiences or my friends have had experiences where um, they were shut down. um, And, you know, that really made me mad. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was like, if they don't let me give the speech, like I will fight, like I will fight. (laughs) This is like out of control. Like you can't, you can't stop people from hearing about things that are like, scary real. like like it's just like you it's not real life like you're not exactly. setting up for the real world by doing that right. so like I know there's all these other aspects of it like parent involvement or whatever but, but like <laughs> yeah it's like well the mission like of the school is to like promote this like aspect of like being uncomfortable and like talking about things that are hard and it's like well if you're going to promote that, then like follow through with it, you know, like you have to let people talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I'm lucky they did. There were some parts of my speech that were just like, they're like, let's talk about this. Um, but I'm lucky that they didn't make me really change anything. Um, because it's like important that you tell it how it is (laughs) and like, if people like that, then they'll leave. They can leave. Like, I give you permission to walk out if you want to. Um, And that's like when I'm talking about it now, like I try to figure out, well, is it worth it? Like with these Mm -hmm. people, like person really Mm -hmm. gonna try to understand or are they just gonna be like, oh, like they're weak or whatever. Like it's kind of just figuring out which people to put your time into. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is why it's like good to have like a big audience. So like you're talking to more than one person at a time. Yeah. So you don't have to figure out when to stop you can just kind of keep talking and if people don't want to listen they don't have to listen like it's just like about making that decision like do I want to put time into this or not you know yeah yeah for sure for sure all right I feel like lastly I just kind of wanted to touch on and share like where you are right now and Alex and I when we were having our lovely little gym chat we were talking about dwelling in this space and time of, you know, being a freshman in college, being an independent, autonomous adult and um, creating space for like, what's next? What am I interested in? And what I was so, I don't want to say impressed because that's, so trite but I was so like glad to hear Alex's mindset about like where she is and just being open to the unknown and to what she's going through and what she might want to do and pursue and I just really wanted to share that and highlight that because I think again when we're in new places and spaces spaces of our lives I think especially as we get older right like transition from college out of college into let's or like job to new job relationship to um marriage or or whatever moving to a new place whatever it may be again it's so easy to create boxes for ourselves of this is who I am this is like I do these things on Friday night and This is, you know, how I spend my free time versus being open to exploring what each new phase of our life is. And I really loved what you said about the growth and allowing ourselves to be in that discomfort and that transition so that we grow. Because for me, that is 
like only well, maybe top three, like what life is about is that growth. And mm-hmm. that, yeah. So yeah. So run with um, that if you may. Well, like in I could probably talk about this for hours, but like in the summer, I was really focused on like self-care and like uh trying to like heal my relationship with fitness. And mm-hmm. I did a lot of healing over the summer. And by the end of the summer, I was like, okay, I'm ready for this new environment. Like I'm ready to like meet people um, and like be in New York city because that in itself is like a really cool experience. Um, And when I did get here, it was kind of just like letting go of everything from home and like all the expectations from home and just kind of living my own life. Like, and here, especially like I texted my family immediately. (laughs) Like I was like, I feel so free here. I feel like I can be myself and people appreciate me for it. Um, And I don't, no one is expecting me to go to the gym all the time. Like they might at home. Um, I still go, I go when I want to go. And I still like have these goals in the gym because I do love working out. Um, But it's just like being here, I can make my own decisions Um, and no one's holding me to anything. I'm holding myself to my own goals, but like, I have the freedom to do what I want to do. Um, and it's relieving. Like I can wear what I want. Like I don't have to like wear makeup all the time. Like I honestly didn't really have that pressure at home, but like I can go out looking amazing or go out looking like what's going on. (laughs) Like, uh, and no one's judging, no one judging you here, but yourself, um, which is like refreshing and, I've found time to like get into my studies like in liberal studies we do a lot of work with like literature and like ancient literature which is something I've always thought was like so beautiful like and couldn't really find time for it and now I am and it's like it's hard because I have to write a lot of essays do a lot of reading but I feel so accomplished doing it and I feel like I genuinely like looking at this stuff and Mm -hmm. you know some days I can't go to the gym because I have work to do. I like, it's stressful living in the city sometimes overwhelming, overstimulating. So like, you can't work your body in the gym as hard as you want to sometimes. Um, and so like sometimes just taking a day off is better than pushing the little amount of energy that you have. Um, so like, I'll do that. And the guilt, like it doesn't hit as hard anymore. Like Mm. it's just, it's about like, making these decisions for yourself. Like I won't go out if I don't want to go out. Like it's, it's nice to have that freedom because I feel like I can find myself a lot more. And like, yes, I've thought about basketball many times here. I'm like, should I just go back? Like I see some of the basketball players in the gym and I'm like, Oh, well like that, that's nice. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go to their games, like go see what they're like. Um, and if I want to like reach out, like I will, But if I don't, that's okay too. Like, it's kind of all just like up in the air, kind of figuring myself out, like pursuing what feels right in the moment, you know? And it's it's nice. Like, I do love it here. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. I think it's such a healthy mindset for, for where you're at and for where anyone is like in life to create And this was the other thing I wanted to emphasize that I really saw in your journey was like creating and establishing that self-trust by listening to that little voice, especially when there's a louder voice trying to tell us something else inside is every time we act on that, like be it big or small, like be it, you know, I'm reading this um, text right now. Maybe I have an essay also wanted to go to the gym, going to decide on like reading instead of gym time, give myself that time. That is like, I mean, put it into sports terms, like that's a win in and of itself. And Mm -hmm. every time we make those decisions, it elevates that level of self-trust in which when bigger decisions happen, we can act on our gut, act on what is good for us. And that is so, so, so valuable and important to train ourselves to do. And, you know, again, it's just not, it's not something that we're taught. It's not like an explicit lesson. And I think that, 
you know, it's, it's really awesome when we begin to cultivate that in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's daunting at first. Like, I was like, wow, I have this whole city, like I have the whole city and no one is telling me like what to do. Like NYU, like they're kind of just like figure it out. (laughs) Like a lot of the time they're not going to be there to help you really. Like you, yeah, I go to school, like I go to NYU, but like, it's basically, I just live in the city and take classes in the city because like, yeah. it's not a campus really. I mean, I would argue against that. It is kind of a campus, um, but it's not like one of those campuses you'd see like in the suburbs. Right. Um, um, so yeah, it's just like nice being right in the middle of the city. Like, just like, you have to figure it out yourself and you have to grow up like you have to in the city <laughs> and like in college you like in the suburbs you do too but in the city it's just a whole different like ball game like if you don't grow up like it's just not gonna it's not gonna go well like you you need to be able to defend yourself you need to be able to like advocate for yourself um because no one's gonna do that for you anymore like they did in high school maybe <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for sure for sure okay Last question. I feel like I haven't been good about this, but (laughs) book recommendations. What, what, what are you reading right now? What is like, what's your favorite book? What would you recommend that everyone should read? Um, oh my gosh. This is always like a stressful question for me because I like read so many books and then I forget their titles because (laughs) I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think I just like immersing myself like in like stories mm-hmm. and like words and then like I'm like yeah that was a good book but then when someone asked what it was I'm like I don't know like I just know what it looks like <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I am the same way I was just telling someone this and it applies to so much more like albums artists people mm-hmm. I don't movies I don't remember names I only remember images same and then when they say the name I'm like yeah that sounds familiar but show me a picture <laughs> like, yeah but um I do like to read a lot of like stories because I feel like looking at the way they write and then also like being able to escape sometimes yeah. is nice um like I haven't been doing a lot of reading like for my own interest because I've been doing so much reading for like liberal studies which I still love like we were reading like the bible and like I don't know if you ever heard of the epic of Gilgamesh um and we're rereading well I read the odyssey in high school but we're like rereading like a translation of it um so just like all these different types of works that's Mm -hmm. like really interesting especially because we have to write essays about them yeah so I don't have like any recommendations right now. I would recommend <laughs> but, The Odyssey. <laughs> I'm so uh, glad yeah. for you that you're rereading that. I just reread it for the first time after high school recently. And in the sense of like from this, I don't know if you've heard about this um, perspective or if you've talked about Carl Jung at all in your psychology class or if you know of him. Um, I'll send you some stuff for you to check out. He's really cool. And he talks about stories. And I think even from what you talked about in your um, speech with that character Ziggy from, what show was it from? The Wire. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Same sort of concept and what you took away. And I think a lot of us take away, but don't necessarily have like a framework or context around is Jung says that stories are telling us how to live Mm -hmm. and how to handle situations and they're teaching us through those characters and experiences like whether that's how we conceptually approach reading or like watching a movie or whatever or it's just subconsciously happening like that's his idea and it's true for me and I read the odyssey from that perspective and it was fascinating and I was like, why, why, where's this context in high school when we're reading this love? Yeah. But that's conversation for another time. Yeah, no, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's just more nuanced, like in college, especially like rereading things, like different teachers will like ask you different questions about it. And like, that's 
that's when it gets like really interesting so it's like oh I never thought about it like that <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure for sure all right Alex well thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and, and sharing your story so vulnerably with us Thank you for having me and asking me to do this. (laughs) Of course.